Let us sing ang Panginoon ay nasa tanto. unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt and fall the fall of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of of the earth. Amen. Let us arise to sing our first hymn, our opening hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King. Hymn 217. salvation through thy son the Lord Jesus Christ as he came down into this world to live the perfect life and offer himself to die for us O oh God we thank thee for thy great mercy and grace upon us and that he died not being left there to rot in the grave but he rose again and indeed Lord we have a living Savior a living and true God who rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father because thou art our God who ordained this, that he is our King, he is our Lord, he is our Savior. 
And we thank thee, Lord, for this afternoon that you have gathered us. Help us, Lord, to worship thee in spirit and in truth. Help us to truly come before thy holy presence with a desire, O God, to know thee and to love thee and to honor thee. Help us to see the truth, O Lord, out of thy word, that we be comforted. And we can thank thee, O God, that indeed it is good and it is a blessed time that we are here. Not because we have heard something from outside from anybody, but we have heard from thee. Thy marvelous work in our hearts, O God, telling us of how good our Lord is, how good you are to us. Help us, Lord, to approach thy holy presence with clean hands and pure hearts. And Lord, we pray that truly we come to worship thee and honor thee from our hearts. Be with us, Lord. We thank thee for all these things. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So May I ask uh, some of our um, members, so we know some of our newcomers can find Daniel it's in the Old Testament, and uh, it is in chapter 9. Please help them. Daniel chapter 9, and let us re read responsibly from verses 1 to 27. This is the prophecy of the passage that we are going to learn this afternoon. This is given in the prophecy of Daniel about 500 years before the fulfillment as is given in Matthew 21 in our text today. So let us understand this and we know that indeed God, God's word is inspired. It is His. It is God's word, not man's word, because even 500 years before, there is already the prophecy and it is exactly fulfilled in the New Testament as in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, responsive reading, Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 to 27, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which speak in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O 
Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belong the confusion of our to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Never have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his clothes, which he set before us by the servants of prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And we have confirmed these words, which is sinning against us, and against our judges that have us, by bringing upon us the great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which is in the for we obey not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins, and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, open my mind and ear, and hear, open my eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O oh my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while I was seeking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my Lord. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me, and he said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee this At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter, and consider the vision. Seventy days are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make a end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore, to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, and the, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. 
we will sing 197, All Glory, Lord, and Honor. Inside, this is the second part of Calvinism and Evangelism, translated into Tagalog for your own understanding, and I hope we can understand deeply or more on this, being translated into our own language. And we are also thankful, I mentioned here in the first two paragraphs of this reinforcement, in fact, not only Ben and Grace with us, uh, we have also just we just heard a while ago that there is also the family of our brother Your Chu. That we are Singaporean. The wife is in Vietnamese. Vietnamese are helping us. So we, we thank God for this help and support. And uh, although our elder he is uh, praying for us, we 
allowed him, we allowed him to rest because uh, he will be our prayer warrior at the home. But they are also distributing tracks in in Far East uh, Plaza. So we thank God for his help. Indeed, God is working in our midst and will continue to be used by God to be evangelist and to give good news, glad tidings to our fellow countrymen, even to those who are not Filipinos. In fact, we have some visitors here, our sisters of <coughs> Indonesia, Indonesian sisters. This is good. We are one family in Christ. We don't look ourselves as only Filipinos. We welcome everyone. So this is a good time where we can worship together internationally before the Lord. He is the God of all gods, the Lord of lords. And so we come now to our, I'm sorry, for our memory verse before, before the openings and the hymn. Let us first read uh, the memory verses for this month. We have this Psalm 51, verses 7 to 8. So in preparation for this, we will just read this thrice, three times, so that we can prepare ourselves for next meeting to memorize probably the first verse or the seventh verse. And then the next few weeks we can get it, the two verses. So we will read first these two verses, Psalm 51, verses 7 to 8. Okay, let us read the reference, the text, and the reference. Ready? Start. Psalm 51, verses 7 to 8. First me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to be joy in darkness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Psalm 51, verses 7 to 8. As you will notice, this is the continuation of Psalm 51, at the penitential prayer of David. When he sinned against God, he was repentant, and now he's asking God to clean, to cleanse him. And he was here referring to the hyssop, the uh, means of uh, sprinkling the blood of the animals during the Old Testament days. And he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. This is the desire of every believer, every Christian. We don't want to keep our sins always in us. We want to be cleansed because our bones, our innermost beings is troubled without God's forgiveness. So reading again, reading Psalm 51 verses 7 to 8. Wash me with his and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to be a joy in darkness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Psalm 51, verse 7 to 8. Again, for the last time, read. Psalm 51, verse 7 to 8. Wash me with his and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. May you turn in joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Psalm 51, verses 7 to 8. So bring this weekly with you and try to read again and again this passage so that next meeting we can readily memorize and uh, recite these two verses. Now let us come to our offertory hymn. Again, this is a reminder to those who do not understand. Kung hindi pa natin naiintindihan kung bakit tayo nagbibigay, please refrain yourself from giving. This is a privilege for the believers to give back unto the Lord the blessings that we have received. Now let us sing hymn 198. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. 198. Thank <laughs> you.
rise to sing the little song. given all our needs, thou hast meet all the things that we need, and we lack nothing, and we know, Lord, that all these blessings, even our health, even our jobs, even the things we receive, the air, the water, the housing, our good friends, our families, our relatives, and these opportunities that we can come before thee this afternoon are all from thee. Help us, Lord, to rejoice and give you thanks. And in this giving of our tithes and offerings, we ask thee, Lord, to help us to give this with cheerful hearts, knowing that this will be distributed for the glory of thy name, for the reaching out of many souls, for the extension of thy kingdom, even for the blessing of thy saints. Lord, we pray that truly you will guide the leaders of this fellowship and the leadership of True Life Bible Presbyterian Church, that these funds will be used only for thy name's sake and only for the extension of thy kingdom. So we thank you, Lord, and we pray that may you prepare our hearts as we come before thee to learn from thee. Hear us, O God, and allow us to hear from thee. Open our ears, open our minds, open our eyes to see the wonderful truth out of thy word. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Now let us come to our scripture text. Our passage for consideration is in Matthew chapter 21. Thank the Lord that for three years we are now in Matthew 21. We started with Matthew 1. In this will be F in that, 2017. And uh, we thank God for the Lord granted us the sustaining grace as we are here to learn of His Word. I will read to you Matthew 21, 1 to 11. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, Unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of him of them, and straightway he will send them. All oh, this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. Lord, that is blessing upon the reading of his word. The triumphant prayer. What it means to be triumphant in prayer. We want to always be victorious in our lives. That's why we pray and we ask God to grant us a life that is always in the eyes of the world positive, always winning, always victorious, always triumphant. And that's what we are looking forward in 
our Christian lives. We don't want to be people who are always defeated. We want to be victorious in Christ. And in this passage, we have here the triumphant entry of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is this triumphant entry of the Lord Jesus? We have heard a while ago of the prophecy of Daniel. I mean, you see Daniel, he's a prophet, he's a prophet of the Old Testament. And he lived 500 years before the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, understand that. 500 years before the, before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even more than that. And during that time, he didn't know about who is this person, or who is Jesus, or is Christ. But he received a prophecy. If we open our Bibles back to Daniel chapter 9, so that we can recollect here what was said. He was actually praying because the prophecy after their captivity, remember Daniel was in Babylon because they were in captivity. They, they were their people disobeyed. They were rebellious to God. They disobeyed God. They have sinned against God. So God chastised them, disciplined them, corrected them. Like a father who corrects his children. A father who is not correcting and disciplining and chastising the child is not a loving father. A loving father is one who will chastise, who will discipline, who will correct his children. That's the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 15 that if you will bear fruit, he, he will purge you. He will trim you. He will uh, make you uh, uh, corrected, be, be cut some of the branches that may be the cause of the obstacle of more fruit in your life. So that's how loving our God is. So here we have a correction from the Lord to the people of Judah, or specifically the Jews. And when they were 70 years, as prophesied by Jeremiah, they were about to go back to Jerusalem. So the 69th year, they were expecting, next year we'll go back to Jerusalem. Next year we will be in Jerusalem. So Daniel was praying and claiming, and Lord, thank you. Even though we are sinful, you have limited this chastisement. You will not chastise and correct us and punish us of our sins forever. You have a limit and you have said that 70 years we will be in captivity, and therefore this year is the 69th, next year we will be in Jerusalem. But in that prayer, there was a revelation from God. Yes, you will be back to Jerusalem, but there is a greater deliverance, a greater triumphant situation and condition in your life that will come, and that is through the Messiah. It will be another 70 weeks. Now when we talk of 70 weeks here, it's not referring to one week, uh, seven days, but it is referring to seven years. So these 70 weeks of years, prophesy the coming of the Messiah. We know that in verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. When there is now a command for you, people of Judah, to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild Jerusalem, that is the start of the seven weeks and three score and two weeks, that means here referring to the 69 weeks. And then after that 69 weeks, the Messiah will come. Who is the Messiah? He is the appointed Savior of the world. God, the Father, appointed the Lord Jesus Christ to come and to truly save the people. He will not just bring back the Jews to Jerusalem. He will save them, not for a temporal salvation that is only on earth, but an eternal salvation that will be forever and ever. So the news to Daniel was not just a joy of going back to Jerusalem. It was a joy and a glad tidings and a good news that there will come a Messiah. But one thing that we can notice here in verse 26 is that after three score and two weeks, this Messiah will be cut off. Oh, this Messiah will be cut off. Now this cutting off of the Messiah is the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified on the cross. He will be killed. 
He will die on our behalf so that we can be saved and be forgiven of our sins. So this is a prophecy. And in fact, after 69 weeks of years came the Lord Jesus Christ. And exactly here in this prophecy, the Lord Jesus Christ entered triumphantly to the Mount of Olives. That's why we can really appreciate this book that we are studying is not an ordinary book. This is not a book that you can just buy from popular, whatever, bestsellers in that uh, bookstore that you can say, oh, this is written by Lee Kuan Yew or whosoever, uh, great uh, authors. No, this is God's Word. Why we can say God's Word? We have a proof today. One who was 500 years living before that already prophesied something that will happen and here recorded also in the book, it happened exactly as was prophesied. Do you have a book like that? Can you find a book that 500 years prophesied and says this will come and truly it came? No, it's only the Bible. That's why you're coming here is not supposed to be in vain because you are studying the word that is of God. A sure word. Not just a word of any man. Not just a word of any genius or intelligent person. It is the word of the Lord God who created the universe, who existed even eternally and will exist forever and ever. So when he says this, that it will come, it truly came. After 69 weeks of years, Jesus came. That's why the people were rejoicing. Masaya sila. Sabi nila, this is now the fulfillment of what was prophesied. And this was a prophecy indeed that was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we can say this is a triumphant praise, a triumphant prayer. First, we will know what is a prayer. We know prayer, talking to God, communicating with God, communing with God. But above all, it's, it also praise God. It also gives a desire to honor Him, to acknowledge who He is. When we pray, we just don't come to God, Lord. We just come to God in prayer, Lord. We do not say good things and we do not say who is He. That is not flattering because we can flatter God. We can flatter people. <laughs> you, you sometimes flatter your, your employers because you want something. But God, even you will say, you are a good God, you are a loving God, you are a gracious God. You are saying He is good, you are saying He is gracious. Is that even enough to describe His goodness and His graciousness? That's why we cannot say, oh, we, we flatter God so that we can ask Him. No, your, even your praises, your giving Him of who He is, is not even enough to describe who He is. That's why when we acknowledge who He is, we praise Him, we pray before Him, we can ask from Him, and we seek His will. Na yan ang purpose and yan ang gusto ng Panginoon. If He wants this to be given to me, then we praise the Lord because this is His will for me. Now, here in this prayer, in this praise, we say that it is a triumphant praise. It is a triumphant prayer because indeed it is a fulfillment of God's prophecy. If you want to pray, that will be really triumphant. Talagang matagumpay na dalangin. Matagumpay na pagdarasal sa harap ng Panginoon. You must pray in accordance to God's word. In accordance to the will of God. In accordance to what is written in the scriptures. Why? Because what is written here in the Word of God, what is written in God's book, will happen. Even if you ask something and you desire this, and you will bribe thinking God can be bribed and can ask and weep and seek every day and claim that you can have it, but it is not God's will, it will not happen. That's why we pray according to God's will. That's why we pray in Jesus' name. Because when you pray in Jesus' name and in God's will in fulfillment of His prophecy and what is recorded in His word, it will truly be triumphant. Then magkatotoo yan. 
it will truly be fulfilled. It will be accomplished. And the people here were praising and glorifying God because they know it is a fulfillment of a prophecy that was given. Another prophecy that we mentioned was the introductory reading of the scriptures a while ago, and that is on Zechariah. Zechariah also lived around 500 years before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anong sinabi ni Zechariah? What did Zechariah prophesy? Here in verse 9, he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Your king will come. And it is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is just and having salvation. And how did Zechariah described the coming of the king. He said, he is lowly, he is meek, he is humble, and he is riding upon an ass and upon a colt and upon and the fall of an ass. He was describing so that you will not miss that this is really what is prophesied. Then Sabina, he will come as a king, then he will say, Kaitsino Jan. Even if there are other people who will say, Oh, I am the Messiah. Like in Davao now, in Davao, Philippines, there is one who, will say, who says that he is the second coming Christ. Wow, what a brave, false prophet. And Kibuloi says he is. It is really a very false claim. Not just a false claim, claim it is a foolish claim. You are a fool if you are claiming that you are Christ. Because the Lord Jesus here is prophesied to come and to enter, and it happened already, that he will be riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fall of an ass. It was not just something uh, dry, uh, riding upon a colt. This is actually describing uh, the 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 offspring of an ass, a uh, small, like kind of a donkey, and it is described as a colt because it's a male offspring, and it is a colt because it is a, an animal that is not yet tamed. I don't know if some of you Probably those who are coming from the villages, except for those who are in the cities. But for us who grew up in the agricultural area, you know that you cannot ride and use a young carabao or buffalo without taming it, without training, right? Kung sa sakit ka sa isang carabao na hindi pa natin, ulo ka kagad. You will, that's true because my my anyan sa ano sa kanila eh parang na ano sila may ano ba yun kiliti o ano ba yun ay ayon nilang sa sakit dahil they are not trained oh it needs to be trained but here it is a colt meaning it is an animal that is not yet trained animal that is not yet tamed and yet the Lord Jesus Christ really rode on this. Hindi lang, hindi tumatalon yung ko, hindi tumatagbo. Because the God who created it is the one who is riding him, on him. So we have here the fulfillment in this prophecy. We see the story. Ito yung sinabi ng Panginoong Iso Kristo. And when they drew nigh, pumunta sila ng Jerusalem, dumaan sila sa Mount of Olives. Kasi doon siya nag, uh, uh, di, di, there he entered triumphantly. And there was a place called Bethphage. It is a place that is, Beth here is the house. Phage is actually a word that describes a, a fig. Green figs or unripened figs. This is the house of unripened figs. So that is Bethphage. And so they pass through this place, and Jesus says, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you will find an ass. So, sinabi ng Panginoon Yesu Christo, punta nga kayo doon. Makikita niyo may isang asno doon. Pagkatapos, mayroong isang, isang anak, isang coat na kasama, yun yung kunin niyo. So, it was a specific description. 
You should not just go there and seek a horse or get a donkey or get an ass or whatever. It is prescribed in a manner which is specific. Don't get me an ass without a colt. If you find an ass with a colt, that's the animal that I want. So when they went, sabi pa ng Panginoon, if you will find this, somehow there are people who will ask, why are you taking this? It's not yours. Hindi naman sa inyo ito. Sabi ng Panginoon Iso Cristo, tell them the Lord hath need of them. Meaning, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will not complain. They will not ask any other questions. They will allow you to do it. So, that was the command. And so they did it. And this was, as mentioned here, the fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah. Now, nung tinalala ng mga disipulo doon kay Panginoong Iso Kristo, tingnan ninyo dito sa verse 7, and, the, and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon. So, the Lord Jesus Christ sat. Saan nakaupo si Panginoong Iso Kristo? Sa ass? Sa ass no? O sa kanyang offspring na colt? Anong sinabi dito? And verse 7, and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches and from the trees and saw them in the way. Now here, by the way, uh, in verse 5, yan nakalagay yung sinasabi ng uh, dito. In verse 5, sabi dito, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, this is a prophecy, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and then called the fold of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, at dinala nila yung ass, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. So this was referring to him here, the colt. So he was riding on that colt, and he was taking the untamed animal as the one who carried him. And this was in fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah, Zechariah 500 years before. Now that was the prayer that is in fulfillment of the prophecy. Important yan sa prayer natin. When we pray, we must pray according to God's word. When we praise God, it must be in accordance to kung sino yung Panginoon. You will not just describe God according to your own feelings. You just don't come to God without knowing who He is. Katulad ba ng isang tao na lalapitan natin, hindi natin kilala, pwede natin tawagin kahit anong pangalan. No, it's not the way. Magagalit siya. He has His own name, has His own identity, and therefore if you come to Him, you must be sure siya yung tinawag mo. And when also we come to God, we must understand who He is. And when they have prayed to God, it is indeed in accordance to God's prophecy that He is God who will come as prophesied by Daniel and by Zechariah. So the first point that we have here in a triumphant prayer is when we pray in accordance to the prophecies of God or in accordance, accordance to His Word. Now in verse 9, patuloy nilang ginawa yung fulfillment ng prophecy. And this is now in the case by which they were praising Him. Now in a triumphant prayer and praise, we must acknowledge also who and who is this person whom we adore and worship. In verse 9, sabi dito, And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, the son of, to the son of David. Now, ano ito itong salita Hosanna? Palagi nating naririnig ito sa mga kanta, di ba? We always hear this, Hosanna. Hosanna. Sino itong Hosanna? Hindi naman ito Susanna. Hosanna. Ano itong Hosanna? Is this a name? Is this an expression? Now, the word Hosanna is actually a word that just calls Hosanna or save us or please save us. Or we pray and bless us. That's also a kind of prayer seeking for blessing and salvation. So that is Hosanna. And it gives recognition to God. In fact, it's not just save now 
or we pray you will save, but you bestow blessing upon us. So it is seeking blessing. And it is in accordance with God's word because they are seeking salvation, deliverance, and blessing to the son of David. To the son of God. Hosanna to the son of David. So they recognize Jesus here as the one who was prophesied in the Old Testament. Siya pala yung anak ni David na ngayon ay dito na sa harap natin. Siya yung anak ng Diyos na ngayon ay inaaktalis natin na siya yung binigyan ng appointment ng Ama na pupunta dito sa mundo so that He will save us. Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the high. So this is actually an expression seeking salvation. And this shows how we have acknowledged the Lord Jesus Christ as the one who is the Messiah, the son of David, appointed by God to come as a savior. So important yan sa prayer natin, na alam natin kung sino yung piniprayahan natin. We are not just praying to someone who, whom we do not know. We are praying to Jesus Christ, and here they were praying to the son of David, and they were recognizing who he is. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And this was a triumphant praise because it fulfills and it gives them the right identity of who God is. Alam nila kung sino si Panginoong Iso Kristo. So when we come to God in prayer, we must understand it is according to God's word and we understand who He is. That's why we come to Phil BF to study more on God's word. Dahil kung hindi natin alam kung sino siya, anong, anong ang gusto niya, anong karakter ng Panginoon, hindi natin ma-fit yung ating mga hinihingi sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Katulad ba ng mga mahal natin sa buhay? Pag birthday nila, pag may celebration, gusto natin silang bilhan ng mga bagay na yung favorite nila. Diba? We want to buy something that we know they will like it. If you don't know this person and you just buy anything because you think it is good, because you think it is expensive, because you think it is a very rare product, and then when he will see this, Huh? Ano ba ito? Hindi niya gusto because hindi niya type yung binili mo. Kahit anong mahal pa yung binili mo, it's not the thing that he likes or she likes. You have to know the person. You have to know that guy or that girl or that son or that daughter or that mother or that father. Kahit na mumurahin lang yung binili mo, pero paborito naman niya, he will rejoice and he will be thankful. We must know who God is. Dahil dadasal tayo, mihingi tayo ng kung ano, pagkatapos hindi naman natin alam yan ang gusto ng Panginoon. We can only know God's will, we can only know anong gusto ng Panginoon sa kanyang salita. And we can know Him as we continue to study His word. Now here in this Passage, alam nila kung sino si Panginoong Iso Kristo by knowing that He is the Son of David, by knowing that He is coming in the name of the Lord, by knowing that He is their Savior, because sabi nila, Husana in the highest, He is our Savior, saved now. So makikita natin dito, they were triumphant in their praises. Not only in acknowledging that itoy according, that this is according to God's word, it is also according to His identity, sino siya, his personality. And not only in accordance to who he is, they were also accepting yung person ng Panginoong Iso Cristo. Because nung nagtanong yung mga tao, ver verse 10 to 11, sinabi dito, and when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Nagtaka yung mga tao, sino ito? Why are these people following the Lord Jesus Christ? You just imagine kung anong ginawa nila. Balikan muna natin itong ginawa nila from verses 7 to 8. Ito yung always na ginagamit ng mga, na, o ginagawa ng mga tao during Palm Sunday. By the way, this is a Palm Sunday as celebrated in some churches. Alam niyo yung Palm Sunday? Sunday before the Passion, 
gumagawa yun sa atin, marami yung mga dahon ng ano, uh, yung, yung palm, sinalam, maraming mga decoration. Ginagawang anong klaseng mga forma dyan para maganda tingnan at uh, pinagbili pa. So you you will see this beautiful, beautifully designed palms and leaves of plants and this was to celebrate during the Palm Sunday. So the people were moved. Why are these people in the city so in much in commotion and coming and meeting this person? Who is this person? At tingnan niyo kung anong ginawa nila in verse 8. The garments, they spread the garments in the way. Yung kanilang mga suot, yung kanilang mga damit, kinuha nila, nilagay nila parang carpet. Dahil they acknowledge this is God himself. They made a carpet, they made somebody, something for a special welcome of the king because they acknowledge Jesus as king. And when they did this, this was in accordance to the prophecy and indeed acknowledging who Jesus is. So this was really a good welcome to the Lord Jesus Christ. This was a triumphant welcome, a triumphant praise, and a triumphant giving of acknowledgement of Jesus Christ. And not only that they were putting their garments down, they were also cutting branches and waving. They were waving, they were, they were acknowledging, parabang they are really having a feast. Ito actually, ginagawa nila din sa Feast of Tabernacles. Yung Feast of Tabernacles in the Old Testament, in time that they rejoice and celebrate and commemorate how God delivered them out of Egypt. They were living in tents in Tabernacle, is a tent. Uh, they were living in tents in the wilderness and how God saved them from the bondage of Egypt. Now that they are in bondage of Rome, because they were under the government of Rome during that time, they wanted to be delivered out of their bondage and they welcome Jesus Christ. Now this is now the focus that we are going to point to. Because although they were acknowledging Jesus and praising Him according to prophecy, according to the right praise, and according to His person, yet, hindi nila nakita yung spiritual sense ng pagpunta o pagdating ng Panginoong Isa Kristo. They were just praying and praising and acknowledging Jesus Christ at the external surface level. At yan din ang delikado sa atin. That's also the danger of our prayers. Because most of us are praying only at the surface, only at physical things, only for material things, only for the things of this world. Diba? Yun lang, yun lang palagi yung content. Means, marami yan sa ating prayers. That is not bad. I'm not saying it's wrong. We have to pray for our provision. We have to pray for resources. We have to pray for good health. We have to pray for protection. We have to pray for safety in trouble. We have to pray for this. But in praying in all these prayers and seeking after God's help, we have to understand that this is us because there is a deeper spiritual understanding that we are serving God and that we are living for Him. And that this prayer will help us to be part of His eternal purpose. I am not just praying for a house so that I can live and comfortably live in that house here on earth. I am praying for a place so that there will be someday a time where we can have a Bible study in there and others will come and will learn God's word and they will know Jesus Christ and they will be saved and they will be there in heaven with me. I am asking for good help. Why? Because I desire that God will use me and I can join the, the, the field BF and evangelize and bring others. Because if I am not well and I am not good in health, I cannot join them. Well, that's what we are praying. We are praying for resources. Why? So that we can help out with the missions and with the work of the Lord. That's why we are praying for increase. We are not praying for, pray for increase of salary just for us 
to para makabakasyon so that I can go to where, whatever, to other places in the world. We are praying so that I have a part in the work of the Lord so that others also will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the deeper meaning of it. I'm not saying, and the Word of God is not saying here that it is bad to seek for God's blessings, physical, material provisions. God will provide for His children. Sabi pa nga niya, mahalaga, niya, mahalaga yung mga ibon sa kanya. How much more for you? If the birds of the air are so important to God, how much more for you people? I came to you to die for your sins so that you will be saved. Why think that I will not take care of you? <coughs> so while they were praying in this triumphant prayer, supposedly, were just at the surface. Physical things, material things. They were just looking forward that they would be delivered out of the bondage of Rome. They were just looking forward that they will be independent. They were just looking forward that they will not be under the control of other people. That they were just looking forward for some deliverance physically. Is this our prayer? Ganito ba din yung prayer namin? Hindi ba natin iniisip na Umihingi ako ng ganito sa Panginoon because I look forward for something greater. I look forward for some people to know Christ. I look forward for my relatives to come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this prayer that is triumphant is not just on this earth, but it will be triumphant for eternity. I will triumph there. Then we'll, when we pray for something that is just temporal, it will just be gone. Dasal tayo ng isang bahay, pagkatapos may lindol, masisira yun. May iyak lang naman. Lord, nasisira yung bahay ko. Trabaho ka naman. Magkaroon ka ng bahay. May lindol na naman. Nagalit ka tuloy sa Panginoon. But if you are praying something of not just a physical building, but you are praying that someday, somehow, it can help my relatives can come and stay with me and they will see that I am a Christian and they will ask of me why I have this kind of life and why God is prospering me and why God has provided for me and I can tell them it is because of Christ and that they will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ because of that blessing. Why you are asking for good health so that you can serve God and you can labor for the Lord. This is supposedly the deep underlying foundation of our triumphant prayer. Bakit masasabi natin, why are we saying that this triumphant praise and triumphant fulfillment of the prophecy and the triumphant acknowledgement of who Christ is in His person is a failure? Bakit masasabi natin? We will see this later as we go on. Pero in advance, ano nangyari? This was on a Sunday. Alam niyo? Limang araw nagdaan after five days, or shall we say six days, on Good Friday, on Friday after this Sunday, anong sinasabi ng mga taong nagsisigawan? Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Ito pa pa rin yung sinasabi nila? Are these the words that they were saying and praising and shouting on Friday? The very same people who cry and shout for sun were the very people who shouted on Good Friday, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Yan ang mangyari din sa atin when we are just looking for the material and external things of this world because when we have this, and then mawawala yan. Nagdasal ka, Lord, manalo sana ako ng loto. O, oh, mayroon pa bang loto ngayon? Sweepstakes. Nanalo ka ng sweepstakes. Pagkatapos, ninakaw pagkabukas. Nagagalit ka tuloy sa Panginoon. Bakit ba, Lord? Bakit ba ako binigyan ng pagkakas? Nanalo pa ako pagkatapos, oh, pagkabukas na wala na rin. Sana hindi na. Ito yung mga tao. They were saying now, Lord, yes, you are the who 
son and as it is the son of David, you are you are coming in the name of the Lord, but not because nakikita nila. Why? You are not establishing a kingdom. You are not sitting on the throne of David. Now you give yourself to be crucified on the cross. Sabi pa nila, awala pa lang itong ano itong tao na to. Crucify him. And these were the very people that asked and seek for the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we this kind of people? We are so prayerful today. We are asking because we have some demands and we have some requirements and we have some uh, things, problems, burdens, ambitions in life. Pagkatapos nung hindi binigay ng Panginoon dahil hindi natin naintindihan yung kanyang purpose sa buhay natin, tayo yung nagagalit sa Panginoon at para namin natin sinasaling crucify Him. What was lacking with these people is the spiritual sense. Why? Because they were not people who truly were believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not born again. They were not people who truly have experienced the regeneration of God in their lives. They were just looking forward for the material thing. And you will see this. I pray you will examine your heart and your mind and your lives. Am I seeking only all the things on this earth? Am I seeking only on the things that are temporal? Am I only praying for the things that are for this on this earth? Or am I looking forward to things that will bring others and even myself for eternity? Dahil kung ating mga pinipray ngayon is just for this temporal world, surely it will be done. You know what? The Lord Jesus Christ, every time you see a rainbow, Sana papasalamat tayo because that rainbow is a promise that God will not give a global flood anymore. He will not judge the world by a flood. That's the sign of the rainbow. That's why we must thank God kung makikita tayo ng rainbow. But another sign na makikita natin sa rainbow, kung makikita natin yan, be careful also. Because that rainbow, though it is a sign that He will not send a flood, that's also a sign that hindi tubig yung maging judgment ng mundong ito. It will be by fire. Kahit anong ganda, kahit anong gara ng iyong bahay, kahit, kahit anong dami ng iyong mga, mga treasures that will be gone, this world will be burnt up. That's why Give your hearts to prayer for eternal things. Give your life for something that will be after this earth. Live your life looking forward for that time where you will be with God forever because that is the most triumphant prayer that will be attained because it is indeed a joyful, a blessed time with God. And that will last forever and ever and ever and ever. I pray that we will understand this and we will not give ourselves to the influence of this world. That kung triumphant prayer natin is hanggang dito lang sa mundo, that's a temporary triumph. But if you will pray and that's a triumphant prayer, prayer that will acknowledge who Jesus Christ is and His coming to save us and that we desire for the things on this earth with the idea of letting others know who Christ is. We are praying a triumphant prayer that will be triumphant for eternity. Siguro hindi naman mahirap piliin kung anong gusto natin. But we can only have the desire to be triumphant for eternity if we truly have known the Lord Jesus Christ. And to believe in Him as a Lord and Savior and that we acknowledge that we have a life after this earth. That there is life eternal after this temporal life here in this world. That this world that we are in is just for a short period of time. 
I pray this will be the lesson that we will get from this triumphant prayer. You will pray a triumphant prayer that is for eternity. Don't just settle for temporal things that will not last forever. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for the fulfillment of the promise and the prophecies concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we come and uh, meet him with triumphal prayer and praise and acknowledging of his person, help us, Lord, to see the greater need for us to submit unto thee and to believe in thee that we might be saved for eternity. For that is everlasting triumph in our prayer. Help us, Father, to see this and we pray that all of us who are here will not leave this place without having that spiritual regeneration in their lives to know that indeed this life here on earth is just temporal, is just short, is just brief, it will soon end, but there is life eternal ahead of us in the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Help us to believe in Him and trust in Him. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, let us sing hymn number 562. Ride on, ride on, O Savior King. 562. Rise to sing, sing. to live with thee eternally. Father, we pray that may you bless us and help us to remember thy words. Speak to us, O God, continually, that we may not forget what thou hast told us this afternoon, that it will stir our hearts, that for those who have not yet received and believed in thy Son, Lord Jesus Christ, today you will give them a heart of flesh, a heart to receive thy only begotten Son, to be their Savior and Lord, that they be secured and assured that there is life eternal ahead of them. We pray and ask all this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen.